So back with another video for you today. Today I'm counting down my 20 favorite Chanel fragrances. Yes, since I have over 20 bottles, 20 different fragrances from this house, I figured it was time to do this video. And this is my very first video shot after I got back from Italy. So if you want to find out what my 20 favorite Chanel fragrances are, stick around. <music> Tuning in, this is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews, and yes, 20 different Chanel fragrances. I've got 20 here. A few of them are strictly targeted to women. Um, we've got lots of fragrances from the Le Exclusives collection, and of course, the remainder of the fragrances are from uh, the men's collection of fragrances. A few other things I want to mention. Um, for example, we have Blue de Chanel in the list, but since Blue de Chanel has three different versions of it, EDT, EDP, and also the Parfum. I decided to put just one of the versions in this list because it smells so similar to the other two versions. For example, also, we have Chanel number no. 19 on the list. There are three different versions of this, the EDT, EDP, and also the Poudre. So I decided to put just one on the list because it does smell very similar to the others with slight variations. So anything that smells completely different than one another will be on the list. For example, the Allure series of fragrances for men. There are four different versions on this list because four of them smell completely different. So let's get started. My number 20 Chanel fragrance on this list is Allure Homme Sport. So this is completely different to me than the original Allure Homme from Chanel but still has minute little deep touches of the original in here. And it's also very, very aquatic. I can see why they call this uh, sporty. Um, it comes off very, it does come off very sporty because it does have those aquatic touches. It's vibrant, energetic with some citruses that give you that energetic, vibrant uh, boost to the fragrance. It's my least fragrance out of all of them on this list. That's why it's at the bottom. But I still like it once in a while and I like wearing this one at the gym just because it does give you that energetic boost. So this is Allure Homme Sport from Chanel at number 20. At number 19, we're going to Platinum Ego East. This is a fragrance that was a love for me when I first bought it in the early 90s. Then I got so bored of it, I got tired of it. Then I got really into it again in the late uh, 2000s. And I got bored of it again in the early 2010s. And back to it now, and I'm started on that thing of like starting to get bored of it for some reason. There's a major metallic touch to this fragrance. It's got a big uh, dose of different herbal notes and mixed in with the citrus notes comes off very metallic. And compared to the original Ego East, as you can see it's silver and it's kind of like uh, indicating that you're going to get something metallic and of course the name Platinum kind of gives you a hint of the style of fragrance you're going to get. It's slightly kind of similar to a Fougere style fragrance but it's not necessarily a Fougere, it's just kind of like an aromatic uh, fragrance. But really, really nice. Uh, I get in and out of it uh, with the love and currently it's at the bottom of the list. So this is Platinum Ego East at number 19. Now I had to put the iconic Chanel fragrance on the list even though I do enjoy it. It is definitely at the bottom of the list and it's definitely iconic. This Chanel number no. five, this is the EDP version. Um, so. If you're ever curious about Chanel, the Coco Chanel and her private life and, and her life in general, there are a few movies about her. Not the very famous one, but there was a second French film uh, about her relationship with Igor Stravinsky. In that movie, there are, is a very tiny subplot of her uh, going to glass and creating her fragrances. So if you're curious to find out about it, check that movie out. And this was one of the fragrances that she was working on in the film. It takes place in the early 20s, 1920s. So Chanel number no. five is that iconic aldehydic uh, woman's perfume that slightly, I mean, I think it's not overly feminine. Um, so that's why it's on the list and I like it every once in a while to pull for it. But I think uh, guys that are probably into more straightforward masculine fragrances might be turned off. But it had to be on the list, so that's why it's on the list. But it is at the bottom. So if you're curious to dabble in Chanel number no. five, there are multiple versions of it, EDT, EDP, uh, 
uh, just uh, the new low is there, but there's probably like seven different versions of this fragrance and you can give them a try and see which one you like. So Chanel number no. five at number 18. So at number 17, this is one of the fragrances that was launched earlier this summer from the Les O collection. This is Paris Venice, this one right here. These three fragrances are eau de toilette fragrances and they're easy to wear, fluid and watery. It, inspired by three different cities Coco Chanel has connections to and they're all coastal cities. Um, that's why the water theme is here. Eau de Toilette's a 120 ml bottle, um, $130, so they're less expensive than um, uh, traditional, I guess less expensive for sure than the uh, Le Exclusives collection, but they are Eau de Toilette's uh, they're nice, pleasant fragrances. Venice, uh, Paris Venice is probably the warmest one. It has vanilla and resinous uh, notes in it, so it gives it a more uh, warmer uh, feel compared to the other two. But uh, that's why it's, it's my least favorite of the three, but I still like it, so that's why it's at the bottom. Check it out. I think the three of them are pretty nice. Nothing original. It's been all done before, but this is probably their way to cash in on uh, making money from uh, every different direction where people are trying to buy fragrances. These are, or were, exclusive to the Chanel boutiques, but they are now exclusively sold at Nordstrom's, probably, now I was told that the boutique here in San Francisco, the Chanel boutique, they said only one department store will be selling them, and it is the Nordstrom department store, so if you have a Nordstrom near you, go check out the three fragrances. So this is Chanel Paris uh, Venice uh, at number 17. At number 16, we're going to a Le exclusive collection fragrance, and this is Jersey. So Jersey is all about lavender. It's a warm lavender. It has a warm vanillic touch to it, but as soon as you put your nose on to, to smell this, you pick up that Chanel kind of DNA that's in a lot of the fragrances. This one has some aldehydic touches uh, that I've come to associate with Chanel fragrances, especially number five. But still, very lavendery, very warm. Um, I think it's a pretty lavender, slightly feminine leaning, uh, but still very easily worn by men as well. Um, if you like lavender, check it out. I was gonna say it might be kind of similar to Caron Puranum de Caron, uh, whereas that one is strictly targeted to men and women do wear it because I think it's very unisex. This one, I think, uh, if you like that fragrance, you might pull this one off as well um, because of the warm touches because Caron Puranum de Caron is um, lavender, amber or vanilla with musk um, and this one has those vanillic warm touches along with the lavender so check it out it's jersey from chanel Le exclusives collection that's at number 16. at number 15 going to a powerhouse from the early 80s and this is anteus this one right here um, this might come off very very mature smelling or tired smelling to the younger generation. It is one of those 80s powerhouses utilizing lots of animalic notes uh, that was really big in the early late 70s, early 80s, well probably all the way through the entire 80s. Um, the fragrance has been reformulated. It, it kind of doesn't have too much of uh, what it used to really smell like, but still you can smell it in there but it's not like it used to be back in the old days. Still though, I like to have it in my collection because first of all, the bottle is pretty darn uh, gorgeous looking dark bottle. Um, actually, the packaging is also red themed, so it's, it's, it's a unique uh, uh, concept for this brand and I really love it. And uh, the smell is, it's still enjoyable. I like these kind of fragrances because I grew up with them in the early 80s. Dad, uncle, everybody, the, the men that I knew as I was a kid were wearing fragrances like these, so I like to have fragrances like this. But if you like, if you like uh, classics and fragrances uh, of yesteryear, definitely uh, get a bottle of Anteus by Chanel. So that is at number 15. At number 14, this is the second of the three Chanel Les Eaux collection fragrances. This is Paris Deauville, another coastal city that Chanel, Coco Chanel has a major history in. Now this one is not as warm as Paris Venice, uh, a lot greener, it has herbal and green notes compared to the uh, the other one that is still coming up, Paris Spirits, where it's all fresh and citruses and uh, floral citrus notes. Out of the two, this is the second uh, strongest for me. Paris Venice is the stronger one with the oriental uh, vanillic notes. But it, this one's all green, very, very fresh, uh, very herbal, 
very woodsy as well. It's pleasant. It's really, really lovely. It's easy to wear. These are meant to be sp over sprayed. 130 for 120 ml bottle and nothing original, but still very, very great fragrances. So check it out. Paris Doval at number 14. At number 13, we're going to Chanel Paul Monsieur. Now there's two versions of Chanel Paul Monsieur. There is the EDT, which is a lot more difficult to buy in the States. And there's the EDP, which is a lot easier to buy in the States. The EDP can be found at most Chanel uh, fragrance beauty re um, retailers. Uh, the, originally I thought this, I was told that this particular EDT was only available in Europe, but turns out you can buy the EDT on Chanel.com in the USA. So. The EDT to me is a lot more interesting than the EDP. EDT has a lot more projection. It does have a very astringent citrusy kind of uh, note to it. It's very classic. It's from the 50s originally, so it does have a mature smell to it, but it's classy. It's really, really classy. It's big on the citruses, a bit like lemon verbena as well, maybe citronella kind of smelling but I still like this one. Really, really uh, great, classy, masculine, freshy. Chypre is what its style is. So check it out. Check out Chanel Pomisieu at number uh, 13, and you, or you can try the EDP as well. At number 12, the fragrance that uh, was launched as, um, God, it was launched as a different fragrance, and then Chanel pulled the, the fragrance and then relaunched it as Egoiste, this one right here. This is all about sandalwood and rose and just a very, very classy masculine uh, fragrance that's been around since, uh, I think, 1990. They launched uh, it in 1990. I got my very first bottle around 91, and then two years later, I bought a bottle of the Platinum Egoist, completely different fragrances. That's why I have it on the list, because they are completely different. But if you like a classy, masculine, uh, designer fragrance, this is one to definitely try. This is under $100, or could be around $100 for 100 mil now. I think the prices always keep going up but uh, a good one. So Ego East by Chanel at number 12. At number 11, the third uh, Les Eaux collection fragrance. This is Paris Biarritz. Now this one's the freshest of all uh, three of them and it's my favorite. It's really refreshing, really citrusy, really uh, like Neroli orange blossom. Uh, so heavy on the uh, citrus floral fragrance um, notes and just really, really lovely. There's a crispness to it. There's a sparkliness to it. Uh, really, really love wearing this one. As you can see, I've worn this one the most. Love spraying a lot of this and uh, it doesn't overwhelm. And the heat, it's perfect. Again, nothing original. It's been done before, but uh, something that Chanel did to just kind of cash in on um, people's different tastes. Anyway, Ch Chanel Paris Beer Ritz. If you like freshies, check it out. And that's at number 11. At number 10, we're going to Kill de Russi. This one right here. This one's from the Exclusives collection. Now, Kill de Russi is all about leather. It's Russian leather, basically what it translates to. And it's a buttery but burned leather. It smells very burnt to me. You still have that Chanel DNA in there, but it's a smooth, buttery, rich suede-like leather. Um, you still also have that Chanel DNA in there. You can pick it up and it also kind of leans feminine. So, but if you get past that Chanel sort of DNA, like the aldehydic touches that I'm used to with a lot of Chanel fragrances, at least that's what it smells like to me. And you like leather, you might really like this one. It's probably one of the more popular um, Le Exclusives collection fragrances, but it is at number 10. Um, it's, a, it's a good one. Check it out, Kill the Russi at number 10. At number nine, we're going to the original Allure Homme from Chanel, this one right here. Really excellent fragrance. I wore it in the early, well, yeah, I think it was the early uh, 2000s is when I wore it. I think it was launched in the late 90s, uh, but I first picked up this one in the early 2000s. It's a classy scent. It is all about tonka beans. It is citruses, but the way Chanel does. And uh, it doesn't smell dated or anything. It's just really, really great fragrance. Now, this one is nothing like the sport one that I mentioned, and I have two more versions of this coming up on the list. Um, but... You can never get tired of this one. This also has similarities to things like Zerjoff Uden and also fragrances like Mandarina Ducks Black or Black Extreme. So if you like those fragrances, you will definitely like this one. Really, really classy tonka bean and citrus uh, dominant fragrance. So check it out, Allure Ohm at number nine. At number eight, we're going to Chanel number 19 and this one has three different versions as I was saying. But what I love about this is because of that um, 
prominent galbanum note. That's why everything is green because the galbanum note is a kind of a green flower. Not necessarily like a like a full-on in your face a white flower style like tuberose gardenia. This is more herbal and it's a little more earthy and woody and uh, it's such a great scent. I really really love number 19. Uh, even though it is more feminine leaning uh, it doesn't come off and or scream white flowers though so you might uh, um, kind of enjoy this one if you like flowers but not necessarily like full-on in your face tuberose or gardenia or jasmine or something like that and there are three versions of this I did leave those off because they are very similar there's the eau de toilette there's the poudre version this is the EDP version which I really really love so check it out number 19 from Chanel at number eight at number seven it is Bleu de Chanel this is the classy fragrance that all men have probably in their collection this is the Aventus of Chanel. Um, there's three versions of it, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and the Parfum, this one. And so I left, I just decided to put this one on because I just really love this bottle. The, my favorite bottle out of all three of them. Probably my favorite version is the EDP though because I think I find the nice balance of the EDT in there. Uh, and then also you don't need to go really full on Parfum. But um, they're all very similar to me. Um, I do have a comparison of the EDT and EDP shot with Ashley on the channel if you're curious to find out about um, more about that. And then there's, of course, there's a review of this one on the channel as well. But this is a compliment getter, a crowd pleaser. People tend to love it. It's an easy fragrance to wear. It's not overwhelming. It is a, a staple, pretty much. And it's a, a signature scent. If you only wear one scent, this could be it for you. If you like this sort of fragrance, check it out. It's a very, very pleasant scent. It is Bleu de Chanel at number seven. So the next one is a flanker of the Allure series and this is Edition Blanche, this one right here. Allure Homme Edition Blanche. So taking uh, Allure Homme and making it uh, or giving it like a creamy lemony uh, touch to it which makes it really really lovely. I really love this one. This one seems to be very popular in the fragrance community and I can see why because it is that unique um, smell. Um, you basically have the original Allure Ohm. You intensify a lot of the notes in there and of course add that lemon, almost like a lemon chiffon kind of a feel to it, lemon chiffon cake because it's very creamy lemon. Um, I, I love this one. It is really really uh, excellent but Recently, I rediscovered another version, another flanker of Allure Homme, which is just uh, after this. But if you like this one and you love it, I can understand why, but definitely test out this next one. This is Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. And it is interesting because you have, um, in, in this one you have this, of course you also have the uh, original Sport version in it. So. I just really recently fell in love with this one over again after trying it out um, back about seven, eight years ago and I had to have a bottle. It's that good. It is really, really good. It's just really excellent. You have a little bit of aquatic sporty touches in here, uh, a lot of citruses, but then you still smell the uh, Edition Blanche in here a little bit and you also smell a little bit of the original Allure Ohm. So, Check it out. I really enjoy this one. I, I can't get enough of it and it is at number five. So this is Allure Homme Sport O Extreme at number five. And then the remainder of the list we have nothing but Le Exclusives fragrances because I really love those fragrances. At number four this is Boy by Chanel. So the Boy by Chanel is an aromatic fougere fragrance that was launched uh, in 2016 I think, two, two years ago. Um, it is the very first EDP they launched and then they reformulated all of the EDTs to EDPs so uh, and then they jacked up the price so these retail the 200 mils retail for 200 and no 350 dollars plus tax in the states um, quite pricey for fragrances and uh, a lot of people were turned off by the whole reformulation thing because um, they felt the EDTs were perfect as they are and some of the like perfumistas that know perfume don't like what the reformulations turned out to be. I think it's just what everybody is like that. I'm like that like, like that as well. If I'm happy with something and then they do something to alter it, I get really disappointed. And of course, uh, the perfumistas uh, are uptight about that or upset about that, but people that are just discovering 
these fragrances uh, probably will fall in love with it. But Boy was the original formulation in EDP, so it's still the same, and it is really, really lovely. Aromatic fougere, heavy on the lavender, heavy on the geranium. Got the Chanel DNA in there. Of course, you can totally pick it up, but a classy, classy scent. Unisex scent, though, so check out Chanel Boy, Boy Chanel at number four. Number three, uh, I've got Chanel number 18. Um, a recent love for me, and I'm obsessed with this scent. This is all about ambrette seeds, uh, but you've got a fruity touch in there along with a medicinal touch, which I absolutely love the combo of the two. Ambrette seeds are uh, known to be musky, so they are, have a musky uh, medicinal kind of a smell to them. Uh, and that fruity touch and the Chanel DNA in there as well gives it such a... I love this one. I'm really absolutely in love with it, just the way it smells. As soon as I spray it, I'm like intoxicated, if that makes sense, like hypnotized with the smell. Absolutely lovely. Um, check it out if you don't know it. It's an underrated Le Exclusive fragrance, but really, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. This one, I don't remember it in the EDT. I had never smelled it in the EDT, but I absolutely love it in the EDP. So there you go. This is number 18 at number three. Two more left. At number two, this is Chanel Coromandel. So this is the EDP version. And I'm happy with it. Um, I remember the EDT was great. Um, I've actually smelled the EDT when it was first launched back years prior to when uh, I first got my EDT. Love that scent. But I can see why a lot of people that love the original and EDT are disappointed in the EDP. There's definitely differences to them. They're not as uh, perfectly made. Now they can get reformulated again down the line and that they kind of turned out to be um, better, but uh, usually reformulations to me are not necessarily to the, the like the uh, like the better of the fragrance. It kind of makes it worse, if that makes sense. I still love the combo of the patchouli in here with the white chocolate. It is absolutely intoxicating. One of the best patchouli fragrances to me. Absolutely love it. Coromandel is amazing, and it is still smells great to me. I love the smell. Yes, it does have some um, changes to it that are not as good as the EDT but I just absolutely love the way it smells. So if you don't know it, check it out. Coromandel at number two from Chanel Le Exclusives collection. Last but not least, this had to be number one because it is one of the best and classiest um, vetiver fragrances. What am I talking about? Sycamore, this one right here. So Sycamore is Chanel's answer to vetiver and it is one of the best vetiver fragrances ever. It is just to die for. Now this is the extra large bottle that I have here that doesn't have a sprayer. It came with an atomizer that you fill it up with. But you can pick up the Chanel DNA in here, but it is class all the way. Absolutely heavenly vetiver. Awesome stuff. Really awesome stuff. I've turned on people to this one and they've actually immediately gone and purchased a bottle. These people are not necessarily people that are into like perfumes as I am. Just average people that like fragrance but not obsessed. And they like vetiver, so they've gone and bought bottles of it because it's that good. They love the whole Chanel concept and all that kind of stuff, and they love the idea of vetiver. Um, it is more masculine compared to the other Chanel Exclusives fragrances, but it's totally unisex. Uh, both men and women can pull this one off. Love it. Love, love, love this vetiver. It's absolutely amazing. That's why it's at number one. So if you don't know Sycamore by Chanel, do check it out. It is to die for. And there you have it. The, the entire collection of 20 fragrances ranked in this order by me. Guys, are you familiar with these fragrances? Do you like these fragrances? Do you hate them? Do you want these fragrances? Which fragrance would you rank at number one if you had this list? All right, so also if you have uh, various Chanel fragrances. What are they? What is your list of top five, top ten fragrances from Chanel? Please let, list them so I find out. And if I'm missing anything in the collection, I will, of course, look into picking up as well. Other than that, guys, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think of this list. Please put a comment down. Let's get a conversation started. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.